Hey, it's Don here from the board. Um, I thought I'd just do a, a nice quick follow-up on the 25 watt soldering iron kit that I talked about the other day. So this is kind of like a, a part two video for that. Um, I had a bit of time today and I thought I'd take a crack at soldering the diodes onto my Ergodox build using obviously the kit that I bought the other day. And it took me about an hour to bend the actual diodes, to slot them in, and then to solder them. Bit of an experience, a little bit different, because previously the only thing that I'd ever worked on was a GH60, which was just switches in and soldering the switches. And the difference between working with that setup to what I've got now from this kit is that that was a 60 watt soldering iron and I was using leaded solder. Now, the kit that came with the JCAR uh, package that I bought was 25 watts and lead free solder. How did I go? Uh, it was quite an experience, shall I say. First things of all is it takes a lot longer for the 25 watt to heat up. As you would expect, it is half the power rating compared to a 60 watt. So you do need to give it a couple of more minutes for it to come to speed, come to temperature. But what really made the difference, I felt, was that having the lead-free solder definitely made it more difficult to work with. It took longer and it spluttered, I think, probably the resin composition in it. I mean, sure, it was probably very cheap solder as well, so the quality isn't that great. And, well, as you can see, I did get all the components on it. They are soldered. Um, the camera's not doing a fantastic job of focusing because it's just a, a very simple dummy camera and you're not going to be able to see how bad my solder job is. I'm not the best at soldering, I definitely don't profess to, and I just hope that all the contacts that I soldered worked. Now, <clears throat> in regards to how much solder I did, I think there's 88 keys, something like that, I haven't counted, and you can sort of see I've used about a quarter of the tube just to do the diodes. I felt that I was probably burning through a little bit more than I could have because it was taking a bit longer and I was ending up with, you know, bits that was actually running up as I was trying to pull away. Um, probably not the most efficient compared to using leaded solder and there was definitely a noticeable increase in the amount of fumes that was actually coming off it. The next thing about the iron was that it's a cheapy iron, you know, you're going to have to give it that and expect that there's going to be some flaws with it. The tip's fine. I, I didn't have any problems with the tip. It cleaned up okay and was behaving. But this rubber foamy grip bit kept sliding. And it was really annoying because it would just slide down. And as you can see, I've actually put a rubber band and I've got a twist tie that I've ended up uh, twist tying on it to apply a bit of tension on that grip so it would stop sliding. And it did the trick. So. I wasn't too concerned that it was actually moving down and you can sort of see like it was doing that by itself but then having the rubber band just gave it a bit of tension to grip on. I thought about using tape but because it was actually getting quite warm I was kind of concerned that the tape tackiness would sort of melt and go all goopy and just be really nasty later on. I don't know if there's a better solution maybe like a cable tie or something like that but after I'd put that rubber band on, it sort of did the trick and it stopped it from going anywhere. And it wasn't any more uncomfortable to hold, really, than without it. So, first impressions, it's definitely going to do the job. Thinking about it, if you're not sure that you're going to do a lot of soldering and you wanted to just have a play and experience soldering for the first time, no problems. Use it experience it. Uh, if you are experienced maybe through school or you've used somebody else's I would say you might want to reconsider getting it. It's not really the best out there. Uh, I had spoken in my other video that you know people have told me 25-30 watts is a good amount of power to use because it means you're not going to be potentially burning the pad. There were some points there where I felt that I could have been. I may have. I don't know. I won't know until I finish building this and putting it together and then testing it. And because it's a black PCB, 
I also don't have the means to see how badly I may have actually overheated and burnt. Um, the marks that are on it, I'm not sure if it's just from heat on the surface or if it's the rosin that's actually gone over it. But if you do have the option and you do have the finances to get a better soldering iron and you know that you're going to be doing a lot of soldering, I would say you probably want to go for that option. You probably want to save up a bit more money and then get a much better soldering iron. For the moment, however, I am limited in funds, so I am going to stick with it and complete the Ergodox build using 25 watt and this uh, lead free solder only because I've got it. Yeah, I'd rather attempt to work my way through it, get a bit more experience and increase my handling skills, my soldering skills. Yes, I may be costing myself a working Ergodox by the end of it, depending on how badly I do, but we'll just have to cross that bridge when it comes. And in worst case scenario, maybe I'll send it to Creamy for uh, a bit of his loving care, and he's going to curse at me saying, what have you done to this keyboard? So there you go. That's uh, my part two on just how it felt to use that 25 watt. And I guess if it's uh, been helpful for you, fantastic. If not, thank you very much anyway for watching. So until next time, happy clacking.